In this video, we're gonna continue on our series on how to create a production grade Docker image for Node.js. In this part of the series, we're gonna focus on the environment variable Node.env and why you should always set it to production. And we're in particular, we're gonna deep dive and show you exactly how the application is gonna behave in those instances. So there's three major reasons why you should always set your node environment variable to production. The first one is security. So doing that will increase the security of your image. The second one is performance. And the third one is the size of your application package because it will create a smaller build. For all three of these reasons, we're gonna deep dive in each individual one and show the difference it's gonna to make to your application and why. So to get started, what we will do is we're gonna bring up Visual Studio Code and we're gonna deep dive into that first reason, which is gonna be application size. If we take a look at my screen just now, we have a very, very simple Hello World application. It's a web server built on Express. And when you hit localhost uh, port 3003, all it's gonna do is return Hello World. So if we look at the package.json of this, you can see the only dependency I've got at this point is my Express application. I've not got any dev dependencies uh, at this point. Now that we have our very simple Hello World Node.js application, we're gonna build that in Docker so that we can see the impact of the node uh, production environment uh, setting. So first thing that, that we need to do is have a very simple Docker file. So if we look at my screen, we can see that I'm using the base Node.js image from Docker Hub, and we're using the long-term support version, which is, as of this time, 14.15.4. This is not the most optimal image, and I recommend you do not use that in production, and I have a whole other video on how you can build a production-optimized Docker base image for Node.js, but that's we're not gonna focus that on today. The second thing that, that this Docker image does is we're essentially gonna take our application and run it in forward slash app. And then what I'm gonna do is copy across my package JSON and my package lot JSON into the uh, Docker image. And then what we will do is do an NPM install. And again, in another video, we will show that how you could use uh, a different setting, which is NPM CI. Uh, and we'll deep dive into why you should use NPM CI over NPM install. But for, for just now, I'm just gonna use uh, NPM install and uh, and then we will show what the effect of the uh, production build is on that. And then finally, I'm gonna copy the source of my application into, into my Docker image and then build that. So that's my, 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 my Docker image. I can build that on, on my uh, on my local machine. So I'm just gonna kick off a Docker build. Now that I've built my Docker image, uh, we will take a quick look at the size of this image. And I can do that by just typing in Docker images. So if we look at my screen, we can see at the moment the image size is 945 megabytes. Uh, that's the total of my base application plus plus my app. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna install a dev dependency. So I'm gonna install GS. So if we type in on my screen, npm install a GS, and we're gonna save that as a dev dependency rather than a regular dependency. So I'm just gonna click that and then that's gonna take a few seconds to install. As you can see, Jess is now installed. It took about 48 seconds. And if I were to rebuild my Docker image, so let's do that, Docker build. Now that my Docker image is built, let's take a look at the size and see what the impact on the image from adding Jess as a dev dependency will be. So I'm gonna type in Docker images. And if we look at the top, you can see that that package has increased from 945 megabytes to 989 megabytes. So the first thing that we know is by doing an NPM install on that Docker file has an impact of 50 meg, and that's purely due to me installing the Jest package. So that's probably the first impact of the setting the node environment variable to production is that it won't actually install any dev dependencies that you've got uh, and it will only install the packages that you're gonna use at runtime. So let's go back to our Docker file and then we'll rebuild that this time setting the uh, production setting. Let's go into our Docker file. If we look at my screen and we will just basically set node env equal to production. And then what I will do is I'll go back to my uh, terminal and we are gonna run a Docker build. So Docker build. And it's gonna kick that off. It'll take a few seconds while it does that. Now that my Docker image is built, let's have a look at the size of the new image. So we'll type in Docker images. 
and you will see at the top here, performance play has returned back down to being a 945 megabyte image. So if you remember, the original size of the image was 945 meg. Then we did an NPM install of Jest as a dev dependency. That brought the image up to 989 megabytes. And now that we've set Node Env to production, what's actually happened is that it's, it's not installed those dev dependencies. So IE has not installed Jest, and we are therefore back to 945 megabyte image. So the first advantage of Node Env production is it's not going to install any of your dev dependencies onto your production image. So let's go back to our Docker file for a second. So if I just comment out node env to production, that will mean that when I build the image, that will set the node environment back to development again. Uh, but what I can actually do is on my npm install, if I do minus minus production, then basically what that means is when npm is doing an installation, it's going to ignore whatever is going on in the node environment variables, and it's going to perform a production install. And that will mean that it will ignore the dev dependencies. So I will just save this. We will run another Docker build, and you will see that there will be no impact to the image. So let's run Docker build. Now that my Docker image is built, let's type in Docker images, and we can see the impact of setting the npm install to minus minus production. And as you can see at the top there, my size remains 945 megabytes. So even though I have commented out the node env to production, it is still treating that as a production build. Now, what I would recommend is when you build your Docker image, I would always set that minus minus production flag when you're doing your NPM install, or even if you're doing NPM uh, CI, uh, always set it to minus minus production. Then you know when you're doing the installation, regardless of what's going on with the environment variable, then you know it's in a production build. I would also recommend that you set uh, node env to production as well. So it's sort of like a, it's double security. Let's move on to the second reason why we should set node env to production, and that is security. So what we are going to do is we will modify our Hello World application. And what I'm going to do in this particular case is I'm going to make it crash. So let's change the route here so that we have forward slash crash. So whenever I call uh, localhost 3003 forward slash crash, then I am going to throw an exception or an error. So throw new uh, error, and we will say boom. Now we have our uh, application called crash. And, and actually, I can just sort of prove that for a second. So if I was to go node source server.js, that will just run this very quickly. And it says hello world there. And if I just do a curl localhost 3003, um, and we call crash, boom, it crashes. And you can see this massive, here's my error. So on my screen, here is my error. And then you can see this entire stat trace. So from a security point of view, this isn't great, right? You can see layer.js, 95.5. So it's giving you the, the lines of my source code. And I really want to sort of avoid doing that. So let's go back to my, uh, let's kill this. And uh, let's go back to my Docker file for a second. I've set my node env to production in this case, and I'm going to do another build of this. And this time is going to be a uh, production build. So let's uh, just do a Docker build. So it'll take a few seconds to build that. Um, now that my application is built, I'm just going to start it up. What I'm going to do is curl my localhost 3003 crash. And we will see the difference between a production and a development uh, version. And, the, and if we look at the difference here, you can see internal server error. So all of that stack trace stuff and goop that was there before is no longer coming back. So I'm not, it's not exposing the inner workings of my application. So this is, for me, is probably the major reason why you should always set node env to production. It is to stop stack tracing and get your application to be more secure and by giving away less information to hackers about the internal workings of your application. So that is the second reason why you should always uh, set node env to production. And then let's move on to the third reason, which is performance. To show the massive performance differences that you can get in certain scenarios, what I'm going to do is create a little 
test application that will demonstrate that. And so I've made a couple of changes to the application. So I've installed uh, Moment, Path, and Pug. And what we're now going to do is we are going to create a new endpoint called Hello View. And what that Hello View is going to do is just going to return a title and it's going to return the current time. Uh, I'm using the moment package to come back with the uh, current time. The reason I want to return the current time in the HTML that I return back is that I don't want any caching to occur on the browser or on the express level. And I'm going to use pug as the view engine in this particular case. So if I go into my views folder, you can see HTML head title and current time. So it's a very simple template that I've created. And then in my server, I'm just going to return that back. So that is, that is the application. The last piece of the puzzle is I've got this piece here called uh, response time. And what I'm going to do is add a new uh, HTTP header called x response time that's going to tell me how long it took uh, the, the operation to perform. And that is going to give you a comparison of the performance when we're in production mode and when we're not in production mode. So if I go to my terminal for a second, so what I'm going to do now is just run that, uh, that new application locally and just make sure it works. So we'll just run that node server.js. I'm going to do a curl. And you can see it's coming back with the current time and it's, it's, it's rendered that engine, which is fine. So what I will now do is I'm going to build that as my Docker image. So let's do a Docker build, performance play. Let's very quickly run. And now what I'm going to do is run my Docker image. And this is in production mode at the moment. It'll take a second to start. We can test my curl. And it's coming back with a response. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a tool called Postman so I can have a look at that response header. So in this case, like the curl, I'm just going to call hello view. And then I'm going to click send in Postman. And then what Postman allows me to do is have a look at the headers underneath. So you see that response is coming back and it's saying it took about 14.646 milliseconds. And if I run that again, 2.583 milliseconds, 3.748 milliseconds. So it's taking very, very small amount of time, sort of two, three uh, mil milliseconds or maybe even 14 milliseconds to run that request. What I will now do is go back to my, my Docker file in Visual Studio Code. And what I'm going to do is I am going to remove the production setting and I am going to do the same on npm install. And therefore, I'm going to be back into development mode. So if I go back to my terminal and we'll just run a Docker build, it will take a couple of seconds to build this. It's now built. And then I'm just going to do a Docker run. So we're now up and running. We'll give it a second for it to start. We'll just do a quick curl on the machine. It's coming back with a response. And now I'm going to go back into the Postman and I'm going to see how long it took now that I'm in development mode with Postman. So if I click on send again, you can now see it's taken 27 milliseconds. If I run it again, 49 milliseconds, 48 milliseconds, 37 milliseconds. So when I was running this in production mode, the it was running at sort of two, three milliseconds now. Uh, when I'm running in development mode is 37 milliseconds. So, so there's a huge performance difference. And, and the reason that is, is in, in things like Express with Pug, what's happening is there's code that says if node env equals production, then it's, it's, it's running more optimized code in that case. And, and the sort of things that it's doing that's more optimized is things like uh, logging, verbosity, et cetera. And it's not just Pug that does this or Express that does this. Everybody kind of does this. There's a lot, there's settings where you have no, if node env equals production, and then it'll change your settings like verbosity or, or performance improvements uh, for those production settings. So hopefully you will see the running Express in, in, uh, with node env equal to set to development is, is, re is a really bad idea in, in that particular case. But if you want that best production performance, then, then really you, you need to get that node env to set to production. As we proved in this video, there's three major reasons why you should set node env to production. The first one is image size, which is essentially not installing your dev dependencies in your Docker image. The second reason is security, so not exposing your stat trace whenever an error occurs. 
And a third reason is performance. So applications such as Express perform substantially better when NerdEnv is uh, set to production rather than development. And the re- and Express is not the only reason for that, um, but the major reason behind that is developers control their verbosity levels and performance enhancements by the use of that flag. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful and uh, speak soon. Bye.